Lately I've been noticing that there's a, uh, kind of like a cop-out, I guess that would be the way I would explain it, that a lot of people making arguments against veganism, against animal rights, are employing more and more and more, and that's, uh, I don't know how else to explain it, just like comedy cop-out. Um, Nate talks to you. Used it recently. Uh, Repsion uses it. The Amazing Atheist uses it. Um, I just came across a Facebook post today from like the White Moose Cafe, who said a bunch of absolutely ridiculous shit about veganism and vegans. And afterwards, they said, basically to sum it up, was that. The real problem there was vegans don't understand how to take a joke. And I, I would describe myself as having maybe a poor taste and humor. Like, I like a lot of stuff that's just downright offensive. Growing up, my mother was constantly getting on to me because I would tell just these dirty jokes and she'd always she'd always just scoff at them. And I, I would feel bad, but I couldn't help it. I mean, it's just what I like. So, I mean, I'm, I'm no stranger to this subject. And don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean that I find everything fucking funny. Just, it doesn't just mean that you could say something that's offensive and automatically it's funny. I mean, I think... Uh, I think a lot of the arguments and a lot of the that are kind of entangled with jokes that I hear kind of anti-vegans make about animals, they are as insensitive and as ignorant as many of the jokes that I've heard about, about uh, black people. And I come from Southern Illinois. I come from a town where there are almost no black people. Um, there are very, very few Mexicans, and for the most part, it's 97% white. Hillbillies, rednecks everywhere, almost everyone votes conservative. You know, this is just kind of what I grew up around. I grew up around a bunch of people who had almost no experience with black people. I mean, the, the most experience that they had with them was like if they go to a city and then they'd see homeless black people or something or... Or, the, or, you know, maybe they see some, some Mexican gardeners on TV. This is about the extent of the kind of people that I grew up with for the most part. I didn't grow up here forever. My dad was in the Coast Guard, so we moved all around. So, I mean, I was a little bit more used to that. But then eventually we settled in Southern Illinois, and I, I wound up around all these people who had almost no experience with just non-white people. Anyway, so I've come across a lot of racist jokes like that and I find speciesist jokes these jokes that are used to kind of make uh, humans feel better about what they do to animals kind of like that not all of them but a lot of them are like that um, so, like one joke that always kind of struck me as just horrifying when I was growing up was I remember I went over to this one guy's house that I didn't really like but I tagged along with a friend and these are a bunch of dudes that I regularly did not hang out with. They were older than me, like four or five years older than me. I didn't go to school with these guys. I knew about them, but I didn't really ever 
care about them or really like them. Now, I remember one time they were having a conversation about, uh, like, what's the best sport out there? And I fucking had never liked NASCAR, but I especially didn't after this night. But, like, one of the uh, one of the guys sitting there, he's like, NASCAR is definitely the best, and you want to know why? And then, like, the whole... The whole room went quiet. No one said anything. Because there's no niggers in NASCAR. And it was like, yeah, man! Fuck yeah, man! And everyone's like, you know, round of applause. Fucking everyone's drinking to that. Yeah, it's like... I'm just like, what the fuck? Where did this come from? I'm like, jeez, I never really thought about it before. But yeah, NASCAR, there's very, very few black people in NASCAR. And yeah, even though those people at that point in time, they found that joke fucking hilarious. I did not find that funny at all because it's just an extremely poor taste. It's not because it, it's not grounded in the values that I have at all. This is just it's com it's a complete a contradiction of of my views on on uh, humanitarianism. That's just that's fucked. Yeah, at some point, uh, comedy, uh, to me, the, the best kind of comedy is the comedy that's rooted in truth. That, um, that really, really emphasizes our, our moral values more than anything else. And oftentimes, the best things to laugh at are ourselves. When we notice uh, the contradictions in ourselves or in our society, it's not really laughing at someone. The, the, the best comedians, in my opinion, are the ones who are able to make fun of you. And then you realize that, like, they have a way of bringing it up to you in such a way that just you can't help but laugh at yourself. I'm a vegetarian now. Anyone a vegetarian? Yeah, there you go. I'm not a strict vegetarian. I eat beef and pork. <laughs> and chicken, but not fish, because that's disgusting. How can you tell when fish goes bad? It smells like fish eat away. Well, this smells like a dumpster. Let's eat it. I am amazed that we're still serving fish with the heads on there. Don't you always feel like that eye is looking at you? Like, hey, you don't mind if I watch while you eat my body, do you? Mm, don't be distracted. A little tear comes out. You can just tell yourself it's butter. Oh, what if a fish was in the audience? That would be awkward for all of us. That could happen like Michigan's right there, buddy. The fish would laugh, but on the inside I'd be crying. Sad. You and your fish head joke. Obviously, some people prefer it like that. Y'all have the fish. Keep the head on there and uh, find out if it had a nickname. Hey, who? Pig rose, you know, pig rose, we always have that pig head sitting there, which is sad, because you can tell they killed a the pig when it was eating an apple. <laughs> hey pig, you want an apple? Sure, what are you doing with that spear? Ow! <laughs> Mid-bite every time. At least those animals aren't alive, you know? I always feel uncomfortable when I go in a seafood restaurant, they have that lobster tank sitting there, all the lobsters appearing out like, Hey, what are you here for? I'm here to eat you. <laughs> hey, all right. Hey, Harvey, this guy. Harvey? <laughs> oh, and Harvey was gone. I do love the vegetarians. Huh? I always get a kick out of when they try and impress you. They're like, I haven't had meat in five years. I haven't had a banana in a month. <laughs> I see me bragging about it. Do you know what they do to those chickens? No, but it's delicious. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love animals. I just love to eat them more. <laughs> Fun to pet, better to chew. I do feel bad they have to be killed. You know, I prefer it was like an animal suicide. Maybe the animal deserved it. You know, this is a good chicken sandwich. I think this bastard tried to steal my car. Good work, Roger. Who's Roger? I think that's what Jim Gaffigan is doing here. I remember 
uh, listening to this bit that I just played before I was ever vegan. I, I remember hearing that and going, man, that's fucking hilarious because I'm an idiot. <laughs> I, the people who, who, who laugh at this sentiment, the people who would actually agree with the arguments that he's making here, just the idea that taste somehow justifies all the terrible things that we do to animals. That's absurd. That's, I mean, you can't help, at that point, you're not laughing at the animal. You're laughing at your own stupidity. But that's a lot different from what a lot of other people out there try to do. And it's pretty apparent that they're just falling back on comedy when their argument just falls apart and they can no longer salvage it. The way I see it, there are five things that someone can do once they start debating against veganism and animal rights. Number one, they can double down. Even though the arguments are all stupid, they've all been refuted a thousand times, a prat, P-R-A-T-T, -T, point refuted a thousand times, They'll just, they'll just continue with it. They just will refuse to admit how stupid their position is. They'll just double down. Number two, they can leave the debate. In my experience, this is about what 75% of people do. You know, they'll, they'll offer maybe one or two uh, arguments in favor of uh, exploiting animals in the 21st century. And once they're shown how stupid it is, uh, they quickly, they just stop. They just, they shut down. They leave the conversation. They don't argue anymore. They just kind of, whoa. You can tell that it's just, it's overwhelming and they're kind of out of their depth at that moment. And they cease trying to, they cease trying to defend the indefensible. Uh, number three, uh, they admit that their argument is stupid and they revise their argument to reflect that stupidity. I wish more people would do this. This seems like maybe this is about 10% of people. Number four, they can do what I'm talking about now. They can hide behind comedy. They can, they can give a bunch of really stupid arguments. They can be presented with uh, a much better argument that proves how dumb their argument is, how stupid their position is. And then rather than admit that they're wrong, rather than going quietly into the night, rather than trying to double down on what they've already been saying, they'll say, ha, well, you're stupid because you actually think that I'm serious. I was just telling, it was just a joke, man. Lighten up, man. I mean, God, this is the problem. The problem is vegans, man. You guys don't have a sense of humor. You guys don't understand comedy. If you guys understood comedy, then none of this would be happening, you know? We'd be getting along great, you know. I'd probably be vegan now, you know, if you guys would just learn to take a joke. Mm hmm mm hmm Yeah. <laughs> Which is obviously, it's fucking bullshit. No, they're not. The argument sucks, and they're trying to, and they're trying to keep their ego intact. They're trying to, they're trying to admit defeat without having to admit defeat. <laughs> Number five, they can introduce a red herring, such as telling their debate opponent that the real problem, the real problem here, is the tone of the animal rights advocate. That's what we need to focus on. That's, that's the issue that we need to really consider, because all problems, all problems are the fault of animal rights advocates. And they're just not nice enough to the people who want to continue exploiting animals.